Hi, this is Robert Shear with another edition of Shear Intelligence, where the intelligence comes from my guests. And in this case, unquestionably, a very shrewd and, and observer, uh, Chris Hedges, longtime correspondent, bureau chief for the New York Times and uh, wrote for a lot of other publications. But I, I want to get Chris on now with some urgency because I'm really concerned about the fate of Julian Assange. I, I, I'm, I've turned 85 in my whole life. I don't think I've had a, a experience, a case of such splendid indifference uh, to press freedom and the suffering of, of a brave journalist in this country. In the United States, he's, of course, not from the U.S., which makes it even more appalling that he's being held under terrible conditions in an English prison. But Julian Assange contributed so much to our knowledge of what our government does. And I go through the human rights media, I get all the mailings and everything, and somehow it's off the charts. So Chris Hedges, you've met Julian Assange, you visited him when he was in the uh, embassy and taking refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy. So tell us something about it. Well, yes. First, I want to second the importance uh, that WikiLeaks and Julian Assange and the courageous whistleblowers like Chelsea Manning have served at shining a light into the inner workings of empire, which is the role of uh, journalism. I don't think there's uh, anyone that's come close to matching uh, the volume of material nor the importance of that material. Uh, and that's why, of course, Julian is being uh, persecuted. Uh, so he's now spent uh, two years in this high security Belmarsh prison uh, in appalling conditions. The UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Niels Melzer, calls what's been done to him torture, psychological torture. Uh, the judge I sat in at the Westminster Magistrates Court uh, uh, decided not to extradite Julian to the United States. Uh, based on the prison conditions in the United States and how uh, she did not feel that that would adequately protect him from harm and self-harm in particular. They, there has been suicide issues with Julian. Um, and remember, this is now 10 years uh, that he was first trapped for seven years in the, US em in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Um, so, but the, uh, of course, the Trump administration appealed this decision to uh, 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 not to extradite Julian, where he faces 175 years in prison. Um, and the judge, who could be very caustic to Julian in the court, uh, and did not uh, dismiss any of the charges that the U.S. has leveled against Julian, uh, refused him bail, uh, even though it was clear that he would now spend many, many months more in Belmarsh uh, waiting for uh, this uh, appeal to uh, be heard. Uh, and there will be a ruling, we don't know exactly when, sometime uh, within the month as to whether the appeal can go uh, forward. Um, the, uh, you know, the decision to keep him in the high security prison, although he's not been found guilty of any crime, the only crime he's, is he, he's been found guilty of in the UK is jumping bail when it was clear that they were coming for him and he took refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy and was given political asylum. Uh, the judge could have uh, had home confinement. He, they could have given him, him an ankle bracelet. Uh, these precautions are, are probably unnecessary anyway because he can't leave the UK. If he leaves the UK, uh, the US can start and goes to another country, the US can start a new extradition proceeding. Um, the, uh, the whole process has uh, really been a mockery of the rule of law. Julian is not a U.S. citizen. WikiLeaks is not a U.S.-based publication. Uh, how can you charge him under the Espionage Act for giving foreign or secrets to a hostile foreign power, which is what the act is about, passed in uh, 1917 by Woodrow Wilson? Uh, Julian's never become, come before a jury. Uh, if, if he is extradited, uh, it will be because of appointed judges uh, and because of the Home Secretary in the UK. Um, uh, and so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing if monitoring offenses are decided by 
a no jury magistrate's court and a no jury appeal. Uh, but this is a life or death case. Uh, and uh, and to, to continue this railroading with, with, without him ever seeing a jury is, uh, again, a kind of uh, grotesque manipulation of the legal process, because I don't think any jury would have accepted uh, that uh, an, a, 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 an admitted CIA operation which spied on Julian and his lawyers in the embassy. Uh, and they had set up cameras even in the bathroom where the lawyers would go to speak. And then given all of this material to the U.S., to the prosecution, uh, would have, uh, they would have thrown the trial out. Uh, I mean, that alone would be, be grounds for invalidating the trial. But the judge accepted, because the judge was handpicked, and her husband is uh, in the private defense industry, uh, you know, and, and, and had formerly worked in the defense industry. I mean, it's, it's very incestuous. Uh, so he's being held without charge uh, for years on end. Um, habeas corpus doesn't exist. Uh, he's being harassed within the prison. He can't uh, get the material that he needs often that just to humiliate him, they would strip search him in and out of the court room when he requested to sit with his lawyers rather than in a kind of glass cage. Even the U.S. prosecution didn't object, but the judge just denied him that. So he could, he, many times he couldn't even hear the proceedings. Um, and, uh, you know, the whole idea that Julian uh, is accused of breaking U.S. laws, he, although he's not a U.S. citizen, um, uh, and um, the uh, violation on top of it with the U.S.-U.K. extradition treaty, uh, which says quite categorically that no one should be extradited for political offenses. Um, uh, and, and what happened under Tony Blair was this part of the treaty wasn't written into British law when the legislation was pushed through the House of Commons uh, in the name of the war on terror. So you have this strange kind of legal conundrum where the treaty and the legislature are in conflict. Um, uh, but of course, the judge uh, sides not with the treaty, but with the British law that was passed after 9-11. Um, so it, it's a politically motivated prosecution against, I would argue, the most important publisher of our time, with, hands down, without question, uh, was initiated by the Trump administration. Uh, and facilitated by the UK uh, government. Uh, you know, there, we have uh, Alan Duncan, for instance, uh, recently released diaries, uh, uh, made clear that, uh, th that this was a planned, orchestrated uh, pursuit of Julian by UK ministers. Uh, uh, so yeah, the, 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 the whole... Uh, uh, failure to uh, give him due process and uh, the, uh, uh, the kind of uh, denial of political asylum. I mean, the mere fact that UK police uh, under Theresa May were allowed into the Ecuadorian embassy is a violation of Ecuadorian sovereignty. Uh, the uh, Lenin Moreno, the new president who was essentially bought off with IMF loans and everything else by the United States, uh, stripped Julian of his Ecuadorian citizenship, Rafael Correo, the free previous president had given him citizenship. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very, it's disturbing on many, many levels, um, not just in terms of the persecution of, a, a, you know, our most important publisher, um, but also the way uh, the legal norms have just been sacrificed, uh, both in the UK and by Sweden, uh, and the United States to to nail Julian to a cross. You know, but I, I want to bring it closer to home to my crowd or your crowd, people who claim to be liberals, people who were shocked by Donald Trump and his uh, disrespect for the press. This is now a Joe Biden problem. And it's of historic significance, uh, I believe, to the liberal pretenses of the United States. Uh, because as you point out, this is a publisher. 
And Daniel Ellsberg, who faced a long sentence uh, under Richard Nixon, if that trial had gone forth, was in a much weaker position. He had actually worked for the Defense Department. The same with uh, uh, Chelsea Manning. Uh, th but the, the reality here is that there's no difference between what Julian Assange did and what the New York Times and Washington Post did in publishing the Pentagon Papers. They revealed they and Julian revealed evidence of international war crimes uh, committed by the United States government. And they had an obligation, which we announced at Nuremberg, uh, to do that. Uh, to, uh, they certainly had a, a right, but even as, as world citizens, they had an obligation because the principle of Nuremberg is that if you uh, know of war crimes, you should you have to re reveal them. And, and uh, so the Find them, there couldn't be more profound an issue. If we look at actually what was released, the shooting of, of innocent civilians, the killing, uh, shooting of journalists, and you know it was grotesque, uh, among many other revelations that came from Wikipedia. And yet I had one journalism professor say, tell me, I don't give a rat's ass what happens to Julian Assange. You know, a kind of respected journalism professor at a respected university. That is not the only such comment that I've heard every time I've raised this case. So we really have here, I would argue, I don't know, as, whether you agree with me, the, the most important case of press integrity and freedom, maybe in this century. I would argue, uh, uh, certainly in this century, but even going back to the, a good chunk of the previous century. And the stony silence about it, I don't hear from Penn. I, I really don't even hear much from any of the uh, human rights organizations. Now let's talk about this culture of acceptance. Joe Biden's name, it's his attorney generals, the general and assistants and so forth, who have taken this case further who refused to drop it. Why? Because Julian Assange's revelations were embarrassing to the official Democratic Party. Right. So this is one of the first acts of the Biden administration when it came uh, into office was to pursue the appeal and continue to seek the extradition. Uh, and uh, and you're right. There is, a, you know, this has all been preceded by a very effective campaign of character assassination uh, orchestrated uh, against Julian. Uh, with the uh, charges, which are untrue, that he committed rape. Even the Swedish authorities did not uh, charge him with rape, but that became the kind of mantra. Uh, and it all became about his personal uh, proclivities uh, uh, rather than the, the heart of the issue, uh, which is press freedom. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, and the, and the liberal groups have... Well, look, I mean, liberals are, are moral until there's a cost. Uh, I mean, I see this with Israel. You know, they will decry what's done to uh, undocumented children on the border because there's no political cost. But uh, taking on the Israel lobby, and I speak from personal experience, uh, means uh, uh, you are uh, essentially pushed out of the mainstream and demonized and attacked, as I have been as an anti-Semite. And so there's a cost uh, for standing up for Julian and WikiLeaks. Uh, and and the, the liberal organizations uh, and liberals themselves have run for the door. That's kind of characteristic of, uh, you know, of, of liberalism itself um, and, and, and its hypocrisy, that it's, it's a lot of it is just about moral posturing uh, and, and pumping yourself up as a kind of moral arbiter within the society. Uh, but as soon as things get difficult, uh, you fall completely into line. So yes, you're right. Penn is an appalling organization, which is was founded originally uh, to deal with precisely these kinds of issues, and it's remained uh, completely silent. It, 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 it is because it doesn't want to uh, it doesn't want to confront uh, the ruling elites and the Democratic Party establishment, which is as aggressive in going after Julian because of the leak of the John Podesta emails. John Podesta was the chairman of Hillary Clinton's campaign. And many of those emails were very embarrassing to uh, Hillary Clinton. Um, and as I've said many times, you can argue, and it hurt, definitely hurt her, how much, I don't know, but it did hurt her. I mean, she was caught lying about uh, you know, her uh, ties to Wall Street. We learned that she earned $675,000 to give three speeches to Goldman Sachs. That's a sum so large, it can only be described as a bribe. Uh, we learned that she was aggressively pursuing 
uh, military intervention in Libya because she thought it would burnish her credentials as uh, a presidential candidate. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're both, and that's what a journalist should do. I mean, your job is, is not to be partisan. Your job is to expose uh, the machinations of power, the crimes of power, the lies of power, whoever's in power. And that's precisely what Julian did. Uh, so when he was going after Bush uh, with the Iraqi war logs, uh, the Democrats loved him. Uh, but as soon as his journalistic integrity led him to also expose uh, the inner workings of the Democratic Party establishment, uh, they uh, turned on him as vociferously as the Republicans. And uh, I mean, journalists shouldn't have any friends uh, in the ruling power structures, and he doesn't. But yes, I've been stunned at how, uh, what, what an, uh, uh, an egregious assault this is on press freedom and how, as you correctly point out, the institutions that purport to care about freedom of the press uh, have been complicit in the persecution of, uh, of Julian. Time for a break, uh, and we'll be back in a few. This is Bob Carlson of the Unfictional Podcast. The new episode is called The Lowrider. If Paula's trademark is her three tail lights. Look at how sexy they look. Nice, yeah. beautiful, they stick out, nice and round, perfect. You take a step back and you just gaze into her eyes, really. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if I've mentioned this, but uh, I named my car, her name is Eileen. Take a cruise with Ernie on a brand new episode of Unfictional. It's out now, wherever you listen to podcasts. Two minutes. We're back with Sheer Intelligence and our guest. Yeah, and I want to push back a little bit. I don't think this is comparable to going easy on Israel and the West Bank and so forth, because there you're talking about opportunism and, and so forth, or whatever you're talking about. This is different. This is Democratic Party vengeance. OK, now, first of all, this case has nothing to do with Sweden. You don't have to bring somebody to the United States to sit in a maximum security prison to deal with a charge that the Swedes have even not pursued. Uh, you, you, that's a different issue. And Julian has actually said he would go back to Sweden and that that's been investigated and so forth. So it had nothing to do with it and it has nothing to do with any of his behavior in England, whether he was in an embassy or what it has to do with the total demise of any notion of Anglo-American tradition of, of jurisprudence, you know, the Magna Carta and everything. It has to do with these two nations, uh, well, basically England just doing whatever the U.S. wants, and basically saying they can not only, well, we know they grab people all over the world and torture them and everything else, they can do it in, in daylight. You know, you, you make our lives politically uncomfortable in, in any respect, which is what happened uh, both with the Bush administration and, you know, in the Democratic Party. And we're going to destroy you. We're going to kill you. We're going to put you in a maximum security prison. We're going to drive you crazy. That's what's going on here. It's vengeance. It's anger. They want to destroy Julian Assange uh, because he dared. This is the ultimate killing the messenger. That's what's really at issue here. It's not just, oh, they're, they're uh, cowardly. No, they're vengeful. They want him. That's what, you know, I don't give a rat's ass about. Why don't you? A, a major figure in journalism, people, other papers have won prizes over Julian Assange, and you don't give a rat's ass. And that is the conventional position right now. That's why, uh, that's why I'm doing this interview now, because I am really ticked off uh, by the deliberate disinterest in, in, in this a whole affair. And, and, uh, and we got to cut to the chase. What, what is happening here is that the U.S. government, whether it's the Trump or Biden government, right now it's Biden. Joe Biden is the person keeping Julian Assange in jail. He's the one who sent his attorney generals to in, uh, keep pushing this forth instead of dropping it. And so anyone who feels, oh, OK, Biden's a lot better than Trump. We solved the main problem. It's a lie. It's a lie. And by the way, it was a lie uh, <clears throat> with Barack Obama because he brought more people, uh, 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 charged more people uh, with we uh, leaking and so forth than had been done by all presidents before him uh, uh, under the Espionage Act. So 
let, let's discuss that. We're, we're, this is not just another case of press mealy mouth cowardliness. This is deliberate act of revenge to destroy well, somebody for uh, being uh, uh, yeah. one of the well, great. That, that's, that's not new. I mean, you know, they did that to Arbenz. They hounded him his whole life. Uh, they ordered the execution of Che Guevara when the empire is really feels wounded. Uh, it's relentless. I mean, uh, until it destroys uh, that person or group. Um, I would say that there is a cost uh, for groups like Penn uh, to make uh, any kind of uh, stance because they're dependent on uh, uh, the Democratic uh, donor base uh, and, and they don't want to lose it. Uh, and, 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 and essentially, I mean, we've seen uh, Penn being uh, taken over by uh, Suzanne Nossel, who became the executive director of the Pan America Center, uh, which uh, and Nossel comes out of the Hillary Clinton uh, State Department, has never said a word about the suffering of the Palestinians, uh, champion preemptive war, which under international law is illegal, uh, uh, never said a word about, as a State Department official, about torture and the use of extrajudicial killings. I mean, she's utterly unfit to lead a human rights organization, uh, especially one with global concerns. Uh, and and I resign, not that it had any effect. But well, I, you should I point to... out that both of us have been honored by Penn. Yes. Uh, under, I, before yes. the Clintonistas took it over. Yeah. Yes. And I was, I was supposed to give a, a talk for Penn in New York City when Nossel was appointed. And I refused to give the talk and I resigned from uh, the organization. Uh, and, I, and I think that we have seen the Democratic Party establishment quite effectively corrupt or take over, in this case, uh, institutions that are tasked uh, with uh, holding up the kind of liberties and press freedoms uh, that, uh, that we care about. Uh, so, uh, and to challenge this, there, there, you know, there is, there is a cause. I mean, Julian has been turned into a pariah and the Democratic Party establishment, as you correctly point out, is as furious uh, at WikiLeaks and Julian as the Republican Party. Uh, and so if you are running Penn and you are defending Julian Assange, you are going to be punished, not only in terms of your career, but in terms of your funding. Uh, and that has effectively silenced uh, and, and then, of course, we talk about publications like the New York Times, El País, The Guardian, Der Spiegel. They all ran Julian stuff. But you know better than I do why they ran it. They ran it because if they didn't run it, the, uh, you know, it would have been released and they would have been exposed as being utterly complicit to the power elite. They were forced to run it. They were shamed into running the material in the same way you shamed when you were editor of Ramparts, the mainstream press, into running material that was true, but that animus uh, towards Julian was always there. And as soon as the material was published, they became part of the campaign to destroy Julian, who they never liked in the first place. Uh, and, uh, and so now it's just, you're right, the, it's, it, it, there is a kind of uh, coalescing of all of these forces now to, uh, to abandon uh, the most important publisher in my lifetime uh, and uh, the one who's done more uh, to expose the reality of the uh, crimes of empire than, uh, uh, than anyone else. I mean, it, it, isn't just, uh, it isn't just the Iraqi war logs. It isn't just the collateral murder video. These were volumes of material that, uh, for instance, exposed that U.S. authorities were imprisoning hundreds of people from Central Asia, the Middle East, North Africa, all of whom they knew, we know from the documents, were not guilty of uh, terrorism offenses that expose this kind of new lawless frontier where people are kidnapped uh, and often sold to the CIA by local authorities. Most of the people in Guantanamo were sold uh, and then held in these black sites, transported uh, you know, across the world on CIA uh, black flights in hoods and diapers uh, and then tortured. Uh, you know, this was all uh, Julian. Uh, and uh, the pub WikiLeaks published the Guantanamo files, uh, in, in addition to the Iraq and Afghan war logs. 
uh, which exposed thousands of illegal killings and violations of international law. They published the, these 250,000 U.S. diplomatic cables that revealed coups and illegal surveillance operations and uh, you know rampant human rights uh, abuses, uh, much of it provided by Chelsea Manning. Uh, so uh, you know the Obama administration and Biden was the vice president was very hostile to the publication of the Guantanamo files. Uh, and it did not go after Julian only because it couldn't, his lawyers couldn't figure out how to separate Julian Assange from the New York Times. Otherwise, they would have. So let, let me, you, let's, we're going to run out of time here, but let me just uh, conclude this. We're talking a little bit about the real hero of this whole thing is Chelsea Manning. And, and uh, you know, uh, the, the way they're going to try to get Julian Assange, they're going to say that uh, he somehow gave her the code or helped her crack the code to be able to get documents. So he's really not just a publisher, uh, but in fact, he's uh, an actor here, which of course is silly because if you look at the history of any great uh, investigative journalism based on, on uh, 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 leaks and sources and so forth, the publisher and the journalists were always very active. The New York Times organized the whole Pentagon papers release. And then when they were stopped, the Washington Post stepped in and these people were honored uh, for all that. But Chelsea Manning was in the position in this case that Daniel Ellsberg is. They, they were part of this military machine uh, and they saw things that rose to the level of war crimes and they revealed it. And where the case now, and, and so what Julian Assange did really was what any honorable publisher should do. He, he published it, the material. Uh, but what, where the case is right now is that the government has been tormenting Chelsea Manning, for, first was released and now, you know, different charges and grand jury and so forth, because basically what they want to do is say, it's Chelsea Manning to say, Julian Assange put me up to this. He's the really bad guy. That's who they're after. And, and it, it, it's a horrible story of government torture and manipulation that you have this rare exemplary citizen, Chelsea Manning, does the right thing and says our government in our name is committing war crimes, killing innocent children and journalists and everything. And then they want to now break her. So she'll go against Julian Assange. That's really where the case is now, isn't it? Yeah, that's an important point for the government because that does separate Julian. I mean, first of all, it's untrue, by the way, because Manning uh, didn't need a password. Manning had, had full access to the material, but the government charges that uh, because it, by if they can uh, uh, convince uh, the judge that uh, Assange offered active assistance uh, to Manning, then Assange becomes a co conspirator uh, in the theft of Pentagon data. Um, and, uh, and so, yes, that, that, that differentiates Assange from the New York Times and the Guardian. Uh, and, and so, yes, they've been persecuted. I mean, unfortunately, Chelsea Manning, through this treatment, who has not broken, I mean, she is certainly one of the most courageous figures uh, of her generation, uh, but, and has also had several suicide attempts. But yes, that's right. They, they want Chelsea Manning to essentially implicate Julian Assange as a co-conspirator, even though yeah. it's, you know, it's untrue. Let me push a little further on this issue of the publisher's role, because if you look at, and uh, you know, we both know Daniel Ellsberg, and he's certainly written a lot about this, but he's not the only one, that any time any publisher, any organiz news organization gets involved with a whistleblower story or documents that were classified or so forth, they're going to be very actively involved. The New York Times rented hotel rooms to work on it. Uh, they and This happened with Edward Snowden's releaks uh, with, with major newspapers. Uh, they thoroughly investigate. They decide what they're going to run and not run. You know, after all, uh, <clears throat> Julian Assange was distributing this to other organizations. He didn't have newsstands or anything. And so the case against Julian Assange is, is a, a parody of, of any claim of press freedom. It's basically saying uh, you can punish a publisher for revealing the truth. There's nothing else to be said about this because it's it, otherwise there's no reason to bring Chelsea Manning to the United States. And so I just want to 
stir up something here for people to ask their friends who are in the news business or a human rights concern or Democrats that were so happy the Democrats are on power. Why is this Democratic president out to put Julian Assange in a maximum security prison for the rest of his life and cause him to commit suicide? That's the question we have. And is it any different than when the, under Lyndon Johnson, the FBI went out to cause Martin Luther, uh, to try to get Martin Luther King to commit suicide? Just because the power is being exhibited uh, by the gloved fist of the Democrats, uh, you know, we have to really ask profound questions of who are we? And it's not some others. That's why I don't want to blame it on, you know, thinking about Israel or something. No, this is an attempt to get vengeance for the worst practitioners of torture and killing of civilians against the person who revealed that. And it was done by the United States. And this is a case only that only matters now of getting him from England to the United States. The rest of it can be dealt with by England and by Sweden and everything else. But the case really has force because the U.S. wants to destroy this publisher. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, the, the Democrats talk a good game, but uh, it was that whole uh, kill chain by uh, that lethal bureaucracy behind uh, Obama's drone war was expanded. Uh, it was Obama that... Uh, uh, reinterpreted the 2002 authorization to use Military Force Act as giving the executive branch the right to order the assassination of U.S. citizens. I'm talking about Anwar al and his 16-year-old son in Yemen. Uh, it was the Obama administration, uh, and Biden was part of that, that used the Espionage Act nine times to shut down uh, and persecute uh, whistleblowers. Uh, so um, uh, there is no difference. I mean, the uh, the hunt, the the uh, the, uh, the the drive to uh, extradite Julian uh, is, um, I mean, not surprisingly to me, as aggressive uh, under the Biden administration as it is under the um, Trump administration. Uh, you know what what has changed is the rhetoric. I mean, we've got that whole other issue. You know that you know, everybody's salivating that Biden is somehow the new FDR, which is absurd. The facts just don't justify in any way that. Um, but the return or that he's the climate president or something else. Uh, and so they are all issuing statements honoring Press Freedom Day uh, at the very moment that they are working overtime to extradite Julian uh, to the United States. So it's, um, uh, you know, on that there's no daylight between the Republican and the Democrats on, on Julian and on this issue. I want to put, again, you have a few more minutes. I know you have to leave, but, you know, I, I, don't, I don't care uh, about the rest of a president's agenda. That to be discussed and so forth. Because I grew up with this. FDR was my hero and my house in the Bronx and my out of work father and everyone else. Okay. And as a result, I really was not my fault. I was just a young kid, you know, uh, you know, seven, eight years old. But, you know, the media ignored the roundup of the Japanese Americans, people who had nothing to do with the war and their internment and, and uh, looked the other way. And so this idea that you you want to support your president because you agree with him on what he's going to do about health care or he's going to do about unemployment and you ignore fundamental human rights press freedom uh you know questions that's the that's the opening that orwell and huxley described you know uh it's always lesser evil it's always a a better way to go and so giving uh, any, any, let's talk about, let's end this with a little comment about journalism. Because if any group of people should know that, there should be journalists. And that their job is not to help the next person get elected or help the incumbent stay in office. Their job is to search, as you did for what, 20 years in war zones, uh, looking at the truth of the matter. 
trying to find out, you know, who's getting killed and who's doing the killing and what's going on here. And that has been lost here now because we have greenwashing. We have Trump washing. You know, we had this oh horrible experience. So now we're going to give this guy a pass. And I want to end on that because I think you have been the not the only voice. I think others like Matt, Matt Tahibi and Green, Glenn Greenwald and others have spoken out. But there are very few people who are really willing to call it as it is now, uh, given their post-Trump trauma. Yeah, and and it is, you know, I think it is a, a damnation of the press. This is the most important press trial uh, of the 21st century. Uh, if Julian is extradited, it will be a signal uh, that the United States can kidnap and extradite anyone anywhere around the world uh, for releasing information that they find offensive. Uh, it doesn't matter whether they're a U.S. citizen. It also gives a signal to every regime uh, that wants to clamp down on freedom of the speech to do so with impunity. Uh, and, uh, you know, the consequences of this uh, are uh, catastrophic. Uh, and the, you know, the, 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 many of those people in the mainstream press, like the New York Times and others who are remaining silent, will rue the day because uh, these people have no intention of stopping with Julian Assange. Well, that's it for this edition of Sheer Intelligence. I want to thank uh, Chris Hedges and uh, I want to thank Christopher Ho at KCRW for week after week posting these shows, making sure the sound quality is there. Joshua Shear, our executive producer, uh, Natasha Hakimi Zapata, who writes the introduction, Lucy Bermio, who does the transcription, the JWK Foundation for giving us some funding to help do this, and in memory of Gene Stein, a journalist I much respected. See you next week with another edition of Sheer Intelligence. Rien de rien. Non, je ne